Hello. For many of us, the drunken master was first seen through Jackie Chan's work. Most of us saw it as more of a joke. No one really took the style seriously, but when a fighter named Emmanuel Augustus entered the boxing arena, for many of us, the concept of the drunken master had come to life. Of course, Emmanuel was sober when he fought, but due to his weird, broken rhythm integrated through dance, he had an elusive, polarizing style that even Floyd Mayweather stated was the hardest he's ever had to deal with. Emmanuel Augustus was uh, my toughest opponent uh, thus far. His record didn't show his, you know, his skill set, but the guy was unbelievable. Emmanuel Augustus was a legend, a warrior who for his unique expression of this craft was served in justice over and over again at that time. They believed he was making a mockery of the sport, a fool, even when he had handily beaten his opponents. In order for me to win, man, I gotta knock him out. You know, I had to take the decision away from the judges. You know, I, I can't afford um, for the fight to go to distance and it's called a draw or I get a loss. You know, so, you know, I gotta knock the guy out. If I don't knock the guy out, then I'm not gonna win the fight. That's, that's in my mind. His tale is one of tragedy, and even the title Drunken Master does not do him justice, for he was not a blundering fool at all. He was in fact a skilled artisan expressing his soul in a time where only few could hear the music. I'm like a fool, and the person that I'm fighting is going to let me do it. You know what I'm saying? That, that boosts me, not them, you know what I'm saying? Because they can't stop me from acting a fool. Now, you want me to start fighting serious? I can do that, you know what I'm saying? But at the time when I choose a clown, you know, what you gonna do? You gonna let me do it and then run into something? Whatever happened, happened. But I'm gonna have fun with it and I, I enjoy doing what I do. Nietzsche. Those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those could not hear the music. Fewer words could encapsulate the great spirit that was Augustus better. Unpredictability via broken rhythm, dance paired with boxing fundamentals, that was the method to his madness. Entwined with only a music he could hear, that X factor made predicting his moves virtually impossible for the average man sharing the arena. He was not intoxicated in the least, nor was his philosophy inspired by one who was. He was just a person who wanted to honestly express himself. At the very least, I'm certain another great spirit, Bruce Lee, would have been very proud of Emmanuel Augustus. Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now here is a true drunken master style. This is what all of you have been looking for ever since Jackie Chan's cinematic era. Who knows if this man is truly intoxicated? Probably not, but one thing is for certain. If he is not, his style is intended to throw you off by alluding to that mental state. Even the way he low kicks collapsing to the ground, he breaks rhythm with a completely different intent. In theory, the drunken master's style exists to throw you off. It is an illusion, making one appear weaker than he actually is, which in turn may lower his opponent's guard. Derek Lewis used the same philosophy versus Alexander Volkov. In this ruthless arena, getting picked apart by the far superior striker Alexander, he kept feigning injury, feigning weakness, attempting to play into his opponent's sympathy to slow him down so that he may recover from the onslaught he was taking. Unfortunately from Volkov taking that bait, his own good heart was used against him. One moment was all the Black Beast needed to secure victory. When it happened, everyone who was paying attention had their jaw drop. Appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. Sun Tzu, the art of war, 
It is what it is, regardless of your own moral code. In this ruthless arena, Derek did what he had to do to win using the same philosophy Sun Tzu used to conquer. The downside though, with such a strategy, it only works once when it is caught on to, it's likely not going to work again. Your opponents will not foolishly sympathize with you. Here, the man continuing to mock the arena, mock his opponent with his intoxicated behavior. He feigns vulnerability. His opponent is in paralysis by analysis. He knows he's trying to lower his guard. There is real retaliation as he tries to enter. During the intermission where he tries to feel for his window, that prolonged moment of analysis gave the drunken master clear entry to the liver. Despite impersonating a failed sobriety test, it was his opponent who threw the liver was shutting down. A true irony. This goes to show one can truly never judge a book by its cover. It is a philosophy much deeper than just the arena, one that revolves around judgment. Judgment can lead us to decisions of people that are not congruent with who they truly are. At their core, what they can truly do some of the quietest people have the loudest, most brilliant of minds. Some are the most sweet and sincere in their heart, truly cold and ruthless. Thus, our aim should never be to judge a person by their surface, but instead through observation of their character. What they do repeatedly, over and over and over again, as time progresses, especially when they see a moment of opportunity. Understanding, it takes time, it takes patience and some time. Tragically, throughout that process, we are clipped before we even find the truth. You know, that's why it is so hard, why judgment is such an easier path. But if you can be resilient enough to stand against the fear of the unknown, the possibility of attaining not judgment, but instead, true understanding. I promise you, you are worthy of attaining all that you desire from this plane. It is a simple, diligent path, understanding. But for that same reason, the hardest. Who said the warrior's path was ever supposed to be easy?